Among the most disturbing lessons learned last hurricane season resulted from the tragic deaths of a dozen nursing home residents. Their deaths prompted new state laws. ABC Action News I-Team investigator Katie Legrone reports on the new requirements that must be in place this season and if facilities are ready. We have no electric. If there's one image that reflects the tragedy of Hurricane Irma in Florida, it doesn't get more dreadful than this. Elderly patients rushed out of a Hollywood nursing home. People are just absolutely shocked. Last summer, residents there died, not from the storm, but the steamy aftermath of living for days in a nursing home without power. Eight patients are now confirmed dead. That eight became 12, prompting Florida's governor to sign new laws. Laws that now require Florida nursing homes and assisted living facilities be equipped with generators or alternate power supplies that can keep power on for several days following an outage. What can this do in the event of a storm? It will basically run our air conditioning. It will keep our TVs on, lights on, kitchen running. So life is normal? Yep. At the Windsor House Assisted Living Facility in Clearwater, this new generator was installed last October. How much did this cost you? Uh, about 14,000 all told. The purchase made after the tragedy on the East Coast and the governor's emergency reaction. It is good. The knee-jerk reaction from Tallahassee was not good. The governor's swift actions were eventually challenged by the industry and ultimately a compromise was signed off earlier this year. Nursing homes and assisted living facilities have until July 1st to get generators installed and enough fuel to keep them running. Ensuring when a storm turns the power off, some of our most vulnerable neighbors never again become powerless. We're ready. We're ready. I'm I-Team investigator Katie Legrone, taking action for you. With the prediction of a slightly above normal hurricane season, this year's Governor's Hurricane Conference in West Palm Beach was packed. Emergency managers across the state had plenty to talk about. Governor Scott said they learned a lot from 2017 and they're ready for anything that could come our way. I know FDOT did a study to see if there's ways that we can improve uh, the evacuation, uh, which I think everybody worked hard uh, to make that go as, smooth, as smoothly as possible, but there's always ways to improve. This year's theme, readiness, is everyone's job and something we can all relate to as we head into storm season. Such was the case as many of us scrambled at the last minute for not only hurricane kit supplies, but to prep our homes. ABC Action News meteorologist Shay Ryan shows us the items you need right now to get your home ready on a budget. Here we are headed into hurricane season again, and of course we know the thing you want to do is prepare and prepare early. Here with me is Tierra from uh, Home Depot, and we know that you ran out of a lot of things last year. And uh, so as we're starting to prepare a little faster this year, what is it that we want to pick up? The first thing you want to get is water. Mm -hmm. You want to have a gallon per person in your house for each day. After that, you want to move on to your batteries and your flashlights. If you already have a flashlight at home, you want to make sure you take those batteries out and check them because they will be corroded. We live in mm -hmm. Florida. So when you are choosing flashlights, you want to choose a good durable battery and you want to choose a flashlight that is already LED. And then once you move up into the price points, you can start getting other things to become more prepared. What would those items be? You want to make sure that you have your rope, you want to have your duct tape, and you want to have your tarps because you will lose shingles in the storm. You're going to want to have your two-way radio, which has the National Weather Service mm -hmm. on it mm -hmm. and can pick up from a 35-mile radius. Oh, that's fantastic. It is fantastic mm -hmm. because when you have a rougher storm, you do lose cell towers, so mm -hmm. even if your phone is charged, it'll have no signal. You want to have a lot of gas cans. If you have a generator, that's going to burn gas. Mm -hmm. um, if you have any other equipment like chainsaws and things mm -hmm. like that, that you will need to trim your trees before and cut fallen trees after. You're going to want gas cans and you're going to want fuel stabilizers. Mm -hmm. So you want to have that gas stored up so that it can power all of your equipment and you don't have to worry about trying to get to a gas station or something like that during a disaster. So from there, you want to move on to your generators. These start at a price point of about $399. Mm -hmm. That's for the 3600 watt, which is what you're going to want if you're going through a hurricane. That right. can power a small appliance or a fridge or something like that if you need that extra storage in your home. Okay. If you move to the next price point and you have some time to prepare, I mm -hmm. would recommend getting an installed generator. Okay. Uh, those run on propane and those are much more efficient than mm -hmm. what these are. This is not a do-it-yourself project. This is something you really need to have done 
professionally, right? Yes, so these are generators, they are very powerful machines and they're mm -hmm. run by propane, which is volatile. Yeah. So Home Depot inspects the home, we mm -hmm. inspect all of your electronics, we make sure that this, this generator can run in your home. That's awesome. And uh, as far as those generators go as well, you know there are going to be a lot of people rushing at the last minute. So the sooner you do it, the less time it may end up taking to have it installed. And in general, it could take anywhere from about two weeks up to a month, depending on the demand and uh, how your house is set up. It's important to start going through your hurricane checklist now. Some of the most important things you need to make sure you have handy are water, food, a first aid kit, toiletries, and your important documents in a waterproof container like proof of insurance, medical records, and social security cards. And if you do have to evacuate, it's a good idea to take a video of your house before you go. Now, of course, we have a full list of things you need at abcactionnews.com slash hurricane. Remember, it's important to make sure you have flood insurance now because you can't buy it when there's already a storm. Now, your homeowner's insurance does not typically cover flooding, so now is a good time to go over your coverage. Start with your deductible. It's normally about 2% of your home value. You talk to an agent to make sure you're not over or underinsured. Some companies have a limitation of $10,000 or $50,000. Some companies don't cover um, the screens getting blown out. Other companies do. That's a great question to ask your agent. And it's especially important to think about your plans in case you have to evacuate now. Many didn't know the closest shelter didn't accept pets. Coming up on Stormwatch 2018, the one thing you can do right now to prepare.